Sorry. We couldn't we could not do anything better with the music. Hey everybody. That's our new intro theme. That's our new intro theme. You might not like it right now, but you will yes. like it soon. The more you hear it, it really grows on you. It will grow on you. So as you can see, we have a mystery guest in our midst. We, we, um, oh, but the is, overlay says the name. So it's <laughs> <laughs> the overlay says the name. So, <laughs> so probably people have figured it out. Already. That's, just, that's just to throw people off, you know? <laughs> We are using AI to disguise his, uh, his um, identity, but probably you already recognize who that is. <laughs> Write in the comments if you know who the, the, the special guest is. If you don't know it, I give you a hint, read it on the screen, you might be able to see who that is. Okay, can we be serious now? Yes. All right, good. <laughs> Guy? You wanna remove your disguise? They have to come out? Yes. Switch on the light. Oh, people have already... Oh. They, they, they already found out that he was... Rodrigo, in. man, you Rodrigo. nailed it. Vlad, almost, Rodrigo. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to a new season of the D2 Challenges. Mike, we're so excited to, to have you as the first guest with us. I'm, well, was, I, was I one of the first judges for the last set? I feel like every time you restart these, I have to be one of the first judges. <laughs> I think that Probably. should be an official, official <laughs> D2 challenge rule from here you, on out. You definitely were there. <laughs> you were regular. Actually, you. why did you stop coming as a judge? Somebody stopped asking me. I don't know who. No, I am sure that I did ask you. It was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Maybe, you know, in the future. You know, maybe. We did as much as we could. The, the, the judging, you know, you guys said they, the quality of images coming in didn't mean that you could just like glance through and say like, this is my favorite. You have to sit there and be like, these are my top 15. Now I got to whittle, whittle it down and Fabio's going to flush some people as a result. Like, Not it was today. stressful, man. Not stressful. today. Not today, but in a, in a month, in a month, in three weeks, we're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm excited for it. I am. Well, we were just talking about this. I got to pick the topic, so you can blame me or thank me as it may be. But I am way excited for this. I think the topic that you have chosen it's amazing, and I can't wait to get into this. But first of all, let me you know, Jason hasn't said a word since we started this live stream. Jay, man, it's so nice to to get back to being online and yeah. do our charades well, and entertain people for in, an hour uh, or two. In common, what do you call it? It's not just D2 style. It's like in common internet st live streaming style. I totally screwed something up just now at the beginning of this uh, feed. What did so, you do? <laughs> so earlier I was playing around. I'm just going to explain it because people were like, hey, what's the music playing in the background? And I was like, what are they talking about? You know? <laughs> So earlier before, I was just playing around with playing a music file. The thing is, you can't hear it if it's playing. Like, I can't hear it, it uh, but, but the right, people can the, hear it. So it was, the... it was playing as we started over our oh. voices. And somebody was like, isn't the music a little too loud over the voices? And it's like, what? Wait, what? Which <laughs> music was it? <laughs> okay, so that's now off. Mental note. Thank you uh, for, for pointing that out. I'm glad somebody said something. It's, it's I can all tell right. You, we'll go over how to monitor in OBS after the stream. You can't. <laughs> there's a way that you're allowed to hear it. Dude. Yeah, and I tried to find that way, and then I was looking it up, and then I had to do something else, and then I completely forgot that I had it playing in the background. So, Listen, yeah, I've bet. done so much work with OBS. I've looked at so many tutorials. I've read documentation, <laughs> which I never do, actually. And I still screw things up. It's that software is designed to make mistakes and to embarrass people on the live stream. It's just it's just making sure that everyone knows that it's actually a live stream. Because if there's no glitches, yes. no oversight, see, you know that it's a feature. It's not a you bug. Know it. 
But anyway, Mike, people are already asking, should we just dive into the topic and explain what the idea for this challenge is? Let's do it. Yep. People All right, are already man. asking, hoping they didn't miss what it is. So oh. if you haven't missed anything, we're going to do this now. <laughs> you haven't missed anything. <laughs> Go, Mike. Take the mic. You want, you want me to do it? Mic. Guys. Yeah, of course. Hugh Ferris-inspired competition. You guys, hopefully you guys know Hugh Ferris because he is the man. And the competition is basically make an image inspired by him. So I'm not a flash, lot of rules. I'm going to flash not, that Im image up again real quick. The one that you made. Ooh, when, you first make mentioned, when you first mentioned Hugh Ferris, I thought, wow, a Playboy competition. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> took me a second. <laughs> so um, I've got, sorry i've Go got ahead. the image up on the screen mike if you want to des describe it or say anything about it uh, about hugh ferris and about like his work and what inspired you to make this image uh well so this is work. the fourth homage that i've made to hugh ferris uh like three years ago i made three of them that were more kind of literal interpretations let's call them of his work he Back when skyscrapers were just becoming a thing, he was like the guy to get to render it. And he would do it in these big, like eight foot tall, like charcoal and mixed media drawings that were all super dramatic. Um, they're like, you look at his images and they just look like power. I don't know, the, the power. I think one of his books is called The Power of Buildings, The Power in Buildings. Another one's called The Power of Buildings. And I feel like it really comes through in his work. And I, I think that, the way that he uses lighting, he usually uses kind of artificial lighting, which you can see in this image. Is it daytime? Is it nighttime? Is there a giant spotlight up there? Who knows? It's very like cinematic, even though cinema wasn't really a thing when he was working or was just becoming one. Um, but it creates, I think, like his sense of composition, light and color is just so strong uh, that when I tried to recreate the first couple, uh, it was hard because it was such like an unnatural way used to working with HDRIs and like going for a natural look. Uh, it took a little uh, experimenting and I, I learned a ton from it. I still love his work. I look at it all of the time. Um, and I think that everyone will have a fun time and make some amazing images and learn a few things by uh, trying to emulate them. And then, and then if I don't know if you can pull up websites, Bertrand also did, uh, Bertrand Benoit did a beautiful, beautiful um, remake of one of his images. Okay, hold yeah. up. I'm going to look um, it up for you guys while you're talking. Yeah, Bertrand Benoit, American Gladiator, or Radiator, excuse me. Gladiator is a different <laughs> thing. <laughs> that is a great that name. That would be a fun show. We could watch that right now. <laughs> Bertrand, if you're listening, please make an American Gladiator image. <laughs> um but I think that his style is very iconic. It's very recognizable. Uh, I think that there's a lot of value to remaking one of his images or taking something that's kind of like a literal study of his work. But, uh, you know, this one is not, the what everyone's looking at right now is not a literal recreation. It's just inspired by, and it was so much fun to make. Yeah. I love it. I think that this is going to be an amazing challenge because we have a lot of, people that work in the field of archivists and this will be an architectural type of work but there is enough space for your creativity to go wild and to interpret the work the way that you think fits best for this challenge again mike what do you expect from this challenge like can expect... we talk sorry can we talk what no, can what, we talk can we a little bit about, <laughs> like, have you been thinking about maybe the limitations that people might face and, you know, how do you think that people should overcome this? Because, you know, sometimes you look at something and you say, okay, people could do this, <clears throat> but maybe they might fall into that pit and not go in that direction because they think that they just have to do this and not that. I don't know if that makes any sense, but when we were organizing the challenges, I very often saw things that I said, uh, people shouldn't have not limited themselves just to do things like this, but rather they should have pushed a little bit more the boundaries 
and dare a little bit more, if that makes any sense. Well, yes. So one of the things that I think that I think that we're going to see that I think you should look out for if you're thinking of sub submitting one, it's not a requirement to go black and white. You can go exactly. color. That's exactly what I was uh, talking about. Um, but one of the things that you get when you work in black and white is more freedom to push things. So like what color would the sky have been in the image that we were just looking at? Blue, would it be like a daytime -y, dark blue? It's, it's, it's not really a real time of day. And then when you try to put colors to that, you're going from abstraction back to literal and it gets very tough. You get a lot of freedom from black and white. That being said, when you work in black and white or in non-realistic colors, which is not the common thing to be working in in, um, in ArcViz in general, is it's not just taking that hue saturation slider and pulling it down. Yeah. Right? Because like a lot of times that will make images that you know look better because who doesn't love black and white? And I love the abstraction that comes from black and white. But when you look at um, like a lot of like architectural photographers that work in black and white, um, the two artists that I'm thinking of, I can't say their names. Um, one is um, Julianne Gasparadou. I've, it's a German or a German, a Greek name that I can't pronounce, but she does these beautiful um, black and white. Oh, the photographer, books. you mean? The photographer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then her work also looks a lot like um, Jay Tintelahar um who's also like a really gorgeous black and white architectural photographer and the kind of the fine art side of things but those images aren't just desaturated right they're taken in color and then blues are pulled down more than warm colors typically how you control value when you don't have color to rely on for contrast is a completely different thing that if, for people that have never done it before might take a little getting used to julia anna gospado dauru yeah can you send me that? I'll look. I'll put it on the same. I've got, I'll I've uh, I'll send you a link right now. Jim. Yeah, I pulled up Bert Bertrand's uh, image, and I'll put that up there too. We can show that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show Bert Bertrand's image real quick. This is this American Radiator project that he did. Oh, it is yeah. really fantastic. Yeah, it's it's so good. He, his his has even got like lights coming in at different angles, directions, shining straight up from the building. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's I great. Mean, it, I, I really appreciate the the contrast that you can achieve with, um, you know, black and white or monotone uh, images. Uh, I mean, because that that could be another interesting idea. I think in this is to tint it you could use black and white but you could still create a monotone image which doesn't have to be black and white it could be something else but it could still have the same feeling uh, and be a different color or i don't know it's i think there's a lot of uh, fun things you could do in this competition definitely like i think that there's a lot of um a lot of options for how to go and <clears throat> how you want to go about doing that is really up to the artist obviously um but I think that we're so used within the commercial world of ArcViz to working in like naturalistic lighting scenarios. Yeah. That I think it I think it might be a challenge for some folk to uh, try and and really kind of push that into a more synthetic or cinematic look. Dude, I think this will be a great chance for people to really unleash their creativity and try something that otherwise they would have not tried on their own right I eventually so. mike you have provided some 3d models yes um so every 3d everyone who's heard me talk about modeling buildings knows how i feel about modeling buildings it's my least favorite thing in the world uh but everything you see in that uh in the image that we were looking at before uh i modeled and yeah, hold on. it's I've, low poly stuff i've also got the uh hold on the, Im the image of the models themselves. I'm going to put throw that up there that you sent. So oh, these are the on. these are the models that uh, will be provided for everyone to to use. If you wish, you can also use uh, um, some of your own things as well. But Philip Philip says something clever. He said, "Do you know that Slav people have advantage in this challenge because we see those type of buildings every day." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, now we're just going to have to to really, really step up our expectations for you there, Mike. Yeah, friend. exactly. Philip, <laughs> I now I now expect from you to put a Slav person squatting <laughs> in a tracksuit yeah. wearing slides from Adidas. Squatting Slavs. <laughs> Otherwise, you are pages. disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone wants to throw in, you know, a couple, there was a there was a comment that Sava made that was critiquing Max Berman from Kitbash 3D's Slav pose. He said he didn't quite nail it. <laughs> didn't quite nail it. Um, um, but yeah, this this kit, like, it's very simple geometry. It's nothing special, but it's enough to just kind of bash your way into an image without having to do a ton of modeling. But you, to be clear, you don't need to use these models. You can use whatever models you want, your own, buy some, whatever you'd like. Um, but hopefully it'll make it easier for a few people. Absolutely. And if you're just a lazy fart, you can just download the models and keep them for yourself. It's a, it's a freebie. <laughs> there you hey, go. There you go. <laughs> you do making your life better <laughs> one day at a time. Now, I don't know if we've, like, like always, I don't know if we've actually clarified in the rules or not. I might have written it differently than Fabio wrote it. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but in my opinion, I would like to see some of the provided models in the image for it to qualify, you know, like I think, you know, the reason of having a topic in the challenge is to get people kind of along the same lines. I mean, you can do it however you want, but then for me, I would like to see those buildings there and not just some random other things. That's, you know? that's such a standard James, the judge. <laughs> <requirement. It's> like, <laughs> guys, guys, guys make it gold and black. <laughs> I'm gonna have I to think... change up this year, you know. I'm gonna have to change up. It's like, and I'm this year. I'm all like orange and orange and red or something. I don't know. I, do, I, I... I am. I am all for seeing amazing images that have like the vibe or the inspiration coming from like a Hugh Ferris style or kind of uh, conception of how you, how to showcase a building. Whether what what models for me. Okay, guys. When I'm judging I, whether or not you use my models, I could not care less. Okay, look, I just was bringing it up. <laughs> we say you, you say that Fabio, I think, is agrees with. Mike. I agree so with him. That's what we do. Okay, that's he, all. The, I was just bringing it up is, for a conversation. The thing is that we should probably tell people watching uh, this year we're going to have Mike also as a judge. Meaning, in the future, every competition that we're going to do, the people that are going to start the competition with us, they will also be judging. We will, of course, try to get more judges on board because it's always nice to have a broader conversation. But that's the reason why we're having now Mike with us discussing the project, because it is still a competition and we're still trying to raise prizes for you guys. So let's try and push it and let's try to make things that are that you guys would not normally do because of your job or whatever <laughs> how does that sound and maybe if we make enough of these images maybe clients will start asking for them yeah there you go <laughs> mike's secret plans revealed can can you imagine a client coming to you and say oh i really want to have a Hugh ferris image make the oh. sky blue <laughs> I'd be giving away images at that point, but that's what would happen until the sky blue part. <laughs> Make the sky blue and put some grass. It needs to be green and see through. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, it needs to be day, but also light, lit up like at night in the inside, so you can see in there. A day image at night, basically. I want everything bright. No shadows, please. Also, no reflections on the glass. Why is the left side of the building darker than the right side of the building? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, man. That brings screaming <laughs> memories back. Yeah. I think memories, everybody... Memories, day-to-day yeah. reality. All right. Let me just ask the community at home if people have any questions to ask them now. We're going to spend maybe another five minutes here online and then we're going to upload all the files. We're going to put the description to the video. So if you have missed out, everything will be written below the video and you guys are able to start. The deadline is on the 28th of October. The show will be on the 30th. 
the reason why the deadline is before uh, a couple of days before it's because we need to have the time to look at the works to judge them and to make a selection of the best works and then we will spend three four five hours <laughs> live talking about <laughs> your images i'm very excited i have to say man well at least uh, two or three hours talking about the images probably a good hour talking about exactly how we're gonna judge them and, and whittle it down <laughs> to a winner That's we're the going maybe, that... and then maybe 15 minutes figuring out if we did the math wrong or if fabio needs to weigh in as a, as a tiebreaker <laughs> i think Whoa. so this I... time it's D2 conference, so you know I won't be a tiebreaker. I'll be... Oh, so now are you both tie? You can't both be tie. You can't have two tiebreakers. No, no, we're now new. Now nobody is uh, the, the the D2 conference is neutral, and we are just like you know we work for the D2 conference. Oh man, <laughs> so we're we can going do to get life threats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be a fun end to that first judging. I think, though, that uh, we did it enough times now that we – it'll be rusty. We have a process it'll down. It'll be rusty the first time, but otherwise I think we got, we'll got we be able to do it. I mean, even the time that we figured it out the first time, like, it, it didn't go <laughs> that badly. Yeah, but that was pretty fun. I, have to I say. think it was amazing. <laughs> Wait, how are we I doing this? Say, I have to say, during the time of the lockdown, that – meeting that we had once a week to discuss the images of the people it was the best time of the week i was really looking was forward fun. always 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 people are asking philip the format what do you mean the format you have to make a picture jpeg <laughs> it can be portrait it can be landscape surprises but it will be written. It's a JPEG image that you have to submit. Yeah. A final image. And we, as as always, uh, I think it's uh, the same. We didn't really talk about it, but I figure everything's pretty much the same as before. Um, you can enter... Uh, when you enter an image of a scene, you should enter one image of that scene and not 10, yes. because we don't want to decide which one of your images is best. You should decide which image from that scene is best and then show us that one. Exactly. But you are allowed to create another scene that's separate and make an image of that as well. But uh, not another scene of the same project, another project. Another a separate, <laughs> another idea. You can you can create yeah. an image of a second idea. Um, I can already see people saying, I found a loophole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean another camera. That's not We're going to get screenshots about. that show that they saved out two Max files. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> scene one, scene two. Okay, I'm, let me, I'm going to show you this uh, woman's uh, website, the woman who did these... Um these images what was her name julie i've got it julia anna gospodaru i also uh, i face messaged you fa face links. messaged <laughs> okay yeah i mean facebook messenger right anyway, I've, face got messaging. These, I've got these up on the screen now <laughs> the the website was crazy with a bunch of pop-ups about workshops and stuff so she's really trying to sell this so if you're interested go ahead go ahead ch check out the website you won't it's miss it a little it. bit crowded i have um, to say but yeah, I mean it's a it's an interesting style she's got. Sorry. She so she and the guy uh, Joel Tintelahar. All right, hold on. Who? Uh, go to go to Facebook and, and click that link. Um, I think Joel's better. But they do have a book about how like their process, which or an ebook or whatever. Yeah. Uh, which I read a long time ago, and I find it to be um, very informative because these are all photos these are obviously not renderings most of these renderings especially when you see um joel tintelahar um they're shot uh kind of like high noon on a blue sky day so that the shadows are all kind of not visible to the camera um and then all of the mood is added in. excuse me um so yeah the whole their whole post-production process there's okay. a lot to learn there. So I just threw so. up this image there. Is this from this lost images? Is this the one that you were referring to? The Oh no. Well that so that's an image that I actually made after oh. reading said book. Oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm um, just throwing stuff up here, you know. 
Um, I brought there's another link before that one. That one I brought up uh, because I think that it's a example, even though it's photography and not a rendering. I think that's an example of a quote unquote color Hugh Ferris inspired image. Okay. Though it is a photograph. Um, okay, but so the color's very subtle and not at all realistic is the point. That was taken at noon on a sunny blue sky day. Okay, so now um, I've got this from from the Tinselhar guy. And let's see, let's click on one. Oh, it's gonna take me all oh my god, let's not let's not go down that rabbit hole. You can just look at the Google image search. Uh, maybe we post the guy's name. <laughs> you can have some looks as well. Did something fun come up in that Google image search? No, no, it's just, you know, you can't just click on the image and open it. You know, it's, it's opening uh, well, sidebars. You used to be able to. Yeah, I know. And then they, and then they, they screwed it all up. Name. I'll post his name into the chat. Um, but anyway. his, his stuff is like incredibly abstract and beautiful, in my opinion. Because I think these, these, this, this is a great uh, way to, to, you know, see some examples of how photographers were u doing black and white it's images. amazing work, huh? Yeah, it's really nice. And then I'm going to throw up the... Did I do that one already? The American Radio? Oh, yeah, I did that one already. Okay. <laughs> Put that up there again, just for, just for fun. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think... Uh, you can you can look for we're going to have the information about the challenge is going to be on the d2 website now so yeah. we will post the link to uh, where the d2 challenge um uh information is on the website if you have um, any questions make sure that you join the facebook group it's very active it's called the d2 community um we post a lot of uh, updates and people post their work also there it's a great way to stay connected with other artists that are also doing the competitions at the same time. So, sorry. Also, oh my god! I started Jeff, making your mic and making went up super video. Loud. Who? What? Who's? Your mic went super loud. No. Okay. It's okay, I think. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Did it just beep? I just heard a beep. Um, <laughs> also, I started making a making of image for the cover image. Uh, it was supposed to be done by now. It's going to be done tomorrow. So I'll be <laughs> posting that to my YouTube page if you guys want to check it out. Uh, and if anyone has any questions or they want to hang out while I make images like this, they should come to my Twitch channel. It's all yes. just look for Drokey everywhere. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. I totally forgot to mention it. Um, I mean, making me do my own promotion here. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Like, Jesus, absolutely. Jesus but Christ. I, I wanted to say... I all I these models to... for these good folks. I want my least say... favorite 3D act in the world. You are very active on your YouTube, and you post a video almost every day, I want to say. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, uh, it's every Monday and Friday on Twitch right now, and YouTube videos are coming back soon. Okay. And you do a lot of paint overs. I've talked to people that really love the work that you do and they have learned a bunch from you. If people are doing this competition and they might get stuck or they might need a little bit of inspiration, probably your channel is the best place to go to actually find that inspiration. And so uh, talking about Hugh Ferris and doing paint overs in a Hugh Ferris type fashion is like the best way I can spend my Monday and Friday afternoons. <laughs> yeah. Jason, I would say let's wrap it up. We're already talking for 28 minutes. I guess that's enough of Jason and Fabio for now. But, <laughs> but not enough of Mike. <laughs> I'm going to be on this channel all day long. All day I'll be here, guys. <laughs> People are saying, M Milan is saying, come back to YouTube because Twitch sucks. <laughs> Milan, uh, YouTube videos are coming back. There, so there'll be one tomorrow. There's another one coming next week. Uh, the live stuff is going to stay separated on Twitch. So come to Twitch. Make it better. Make it better. Come hang out with us. I miss you, Milan. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really hope that you're going to participate into the uh, in, with this ch challenge. I hope that you decide to share this video so that we can make a lot more people participate. Fabio, I just realized something that we did not discuss, which people who have done the challenge before probably expect, but this challenge is going to be three weeks long. We didn't yes. talk about this. So 
it's launching today. You have three weeks uh, till the 28th of October to enter the image. So uh, this is not going to be a mad rush, you know. That you, you have three weeks of time that you can spend on the couch and then the day before yeah, exactly. you can finish the image <laughs> and send it to me and say that you need a little bit more time. N next year we could do this as Dtober, where you have to submit an image every day. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> and only people who submit the image every day get to be put into the into the judging, uh, right? Yeah, and, like then, the, and then it's a pool. Who did the best work as a portfolio <laughs> of single-day images? And Paul Lupin will in, give us three images every day. <laughs> <laughs> He'll win the top three spots. He'll have three different accounts. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that again because I think, you know, people are going to worry they have to rush, but there's not going to be a rush on this one. You're going to have uh, – we also expect the images to be even better. That's the, you yeah. know, you got three weeks now. You know, it's not just a week. So you we're got hoping three to weeks. see some amazing stuff in three weeks. But all the info's there on the website uh, about how you enter, how you, uh, you know, the rules, the size, you know, how you submit the images, all that, and the dates. So, yeah. We'll put that in the description. Dude, let's wrap it up. Yep. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Share this video. Hit the like button because it always helps with the algorithm. The goddamn <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> and we will see each other probably a little bit sooner because we have other content planned for you guys. But if you're just interested in the competition, we get it. We'll see each other in about three weeks. I cannot wait. Is okay. that everything? All right. Yeah, I will see Bye, you. everyone. Much love have, with all my heart. Have fun, guys. Make some awesome images. I can't wait to see them. Okay, Cannot Fabio. Wait. Outro Yo. music starting outro now. Outro music. Cue it. Now? Okay. <laughs> we need 20 seconds worth. <laughs> no, I ran out of music. Okay, good night, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>